Uh, our next presenter talking about contemporary paper marbling is Christina. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, I'm basically a mixed media book artist. And um, I started my life off as a photographer and did a whole lot of weddings, like 780 weddings. And I was really fed up with the condition of photo albums in this world. They were real cheese ball. You know, I didn't like them. I didn't so I had, and I had to learn and teach myself because I, that's just the kind of way I am. And you just kind of jump right in and figure it out. And then maybe later on, like five years later, take a class. And then you're like, oh, yeah. That's why that didn't work out well. So I taught myself in the last like 20 years or so how to uh, do some of the book art related stuff. And paper marbling is a big uh, ingredient in a lot of people's bookmaking. And I, I just fell in love with the papers when I went shopping in like uh, foreign countries and interesting you know, art venues. I would buy really beautiful papers of other people. And I got fed up with having to search, you know, the search for cool paper. So I decided I needed to learn how to do it. And it turns out that it's actually a pretty cool technique. Officially, it's referred to as aqueous surface decoration. Okay? So we have a, a vat of liquid and we're going to float something on the top. So it's a little bit of an oil and water idea. The liquid can be different things, and the stuff you float on top can be different things, but they have to not get along so that the floating occurs. Um, I particularly like ebru, which is the Turkish form of marbling. And in ebru, you use a water that has a thickening agent in it, Kerenagian. It's actually in the algae family, but it's referred to as Irish moss. Okay, it comes as a powder. It's finely ground. You mix it into the liquid and it creates this kind of slimy substance. In the world, it's used predominantly for making sauces and ice creams kind of slimy. So it's actually a food item. So here you're seeing the surface of the size of the vat of the liquid and we're dropping a modified acrylic. So it's an acrylic paint. It's dropped onto the surface and then you manipulate it with either rakes and cones or you can go with little, you can see on the side here, some skewers and different tools and you create designs. Now, historically, there are very specific designs that people like. But I think uh, this is the Abru, typical Abru. You're creating little stylized things, like flowers or fish or lips or hearts. Um, I'm more into a little more freeform kind of stylation myself. So you'll see towards the end of the slideshow a little bit more unusual designs that look a little bit more like monotypes. So you know, it's printmaking, sort of. Here you're seeing someone pulling off the paper. These are a lot of images of some of my students. So we're pulling a piece of paper off of the side. And so we're also able to print it on fabric. So here are silks. I do silk scarves. I do men's pocket squares. Because like you need a little flourish. It's always nice to have a little extra something going on. Um, I can do lampshades. I can do lanterns, like paper lanterns. I can do it on glass with enamel instead of acrylic. You can dip into the surface or lay something flat across the surface. So when you're dipping a three-dimensional object, it gets really interesting. Yeah. So here you're seeing some of the other products that you can make. And when you light it up, it's really beautiful the way the light comes through. So they work out really well. Um, I think the home decor items have been very popular and successful as an artist for me. But my personal, like, fine art kind of contexts are mainly in the books. So I kind of like to bring it back a little more to the tradition of how it started originally, which would be the inside lining of a book. You know, it's called the fly leaf and the end papers of a book. But I like to flip the script a little and make it be the covers. So here you're seeing a whole production of a whole bunch of little miniature books um, for Valentine's Day. This is, a, I call it a more food, a crazy love, a mad love, because they're like little hearts, but they're kind of like going all over the place. Yeah. You can marble on top of something that's already been marbled. So here you're seeing it's called over marbling, where you have a design in the background and then another one sitting on top. The one in the middle is probably four or five dips. So we can keep adding and keep adding and keep adding, and it gets this really beautiful kind of layered textured feel to it. You can really jump off of the technique and come up with imagery that could stand alone and be actually framed as a, as a print instead of used as a collage item or making a reading card out of it. So you can come up with some asymmetrical designs that are much more contemporary and unusual. I think this is more of a, a contemporary look than a traditional even patternation of the whole sheet of paper. 
Um, I do a lot less combing. I'm a feminist artist, and I do a lot of secret vagina art. Love that. <laughs> here's a, here's a, uh, a marbled image that is, you know, going there. It's going there. Yeah, yeah. I love to do book structures that open up and fold out. And these type of images do really well for thinking about, let's go there, orifices, okay? So you have a page that opens up, and you have this specimen-like looking image that borders on like biological. This is called Tunnel of Love. It speaks for itself. Yeah, it draws you right in there. It does. So you, know, you can take these things out of historical contexts and really run with them in the direction you need to. And it's interesting how a patternation like this can become a conceptualization. And that's what I think is interesting about the craft, that it has such flexibility.